is QuickTime. It's important to know, however, that QuickTime is more than just video and sound. QuickTime supports a variety of data types, video, audio, 3D, sprites, and music. Go back there. As a matter of fact, what we've done is we are now taking all that we've done for the professional video space, all that we've done for the CD-ROM space, and we're moving that to the internet. We've recently announced an agreement with Netscape to include a plug-in with Navigator 3.0 that delivers QuickTime content within web pages. Let's take a look at that. First of all, I'd like to start off by going to a page that contains some music information. As I said, one of the tracks in QuickTime is a music track. It's a MIDI track. MIDI is an ideal data type for the internet, very small. And by being able to embed QuickTime content, specifically MIDI content in this example, I now have a web experience that looks something like this. We'll go to the Mozart homepage here, and you'll notice that almost instantly, music will begin to play. This is an approximately 2K file. As a matter of fact, it's embedded properly. This could actually be plain as interlude while those big, nasty graphics and text files load in. Let's take a look at some other examples here. Let's go to the Cal State Hayward page. We have several things going on here. Uh, for one, this is a QuickTime uh, video playing in a frame in the upper left-hand corner here. Of course, this plugin will allow you to embed QuickTime VR files within your home pages. We are truly bringing virtual reality to the web with this technology. Let's talk about video for a minute, though. Uh, as Larry said, uh, one of the problems, if you will, with multimedia on the net today is that it takes a long time to download something. Well, we've come up with a very clever solution around this. What we've done is we've come up with something we're calling Fast Start. It's a Fast Start feature. It means that we can figure out, because of the way the QuickTime file format works, we can figure out when can I start playing a movie without running out of stuff to play. What this does is a couple things. First of all, if you have a fast network connection, then great, it starts almost immediately. If you have a slower connection, such as a 28.8 modem, you simply wait a little longer before you can actually start to deliver your content. The result is absolutely amazing, and I think you'll agree. I'm going to click on this link here, which is going to start playing a movie within the frame. And I'd like you to notice a couple of things. You'll see a little thermometer moving along the bottom of the movie as it's playing. That is actually the movie as it's being downloaded. And you'll see the little play bar moving along right behind it. And all we really have to do is make sure we stay right behind that little thermometer. Here's what the experience looks like. Folks, guess what? It's QuickTime. It's not a new file format for QuickTime. It's QuickTime. It's the QuickTime you already have. You don't need to re-digitize anything. Let's do one last example here. I'm going to actually connect to... Thanks. I'm going to connect to a uh, server that's in San Francisco. This is actually running on a... Um, let's stop it for a minute while I talk here. You can see it downloading here. This is running on a low-end power PC in San Francisco. We'll go ahead and play this uh, video. Again, you can see the little gray bar as we download. And again, it's QuickTime. I have the ability to work with all the information as I'd expect to be able to here. All we have to do is be sure we stay behind the little gray bar. QuickTime already provides millions of people with dynamic multimedia experiences on their CD-ROMs. Guess what, folks? We're taking this to the Internet in a big way with this technology. Thank you. All right.